This video is my top five favorite Skagos theories. This is a super selfish video. I'm merely presenting these theories and want to hear your thoughts on them. I'm more interested in discussions in the comment section than I am of convincing you of any of these theories. These are not theories I particularly subscribe to, but ones that I thought were fun. So here are my favorite Skagos theories people have shared with me. Number five, the Skagosi are actually wargs and skin changers, as in an island of wargs and skin changers. They earn the reputation of being cannibals from eating their human foes while inside animals. We know a warg eating his own human body isn't unheard of, or a warg eating the body of another human while as an animal. This could have been misinterpreted as cannibalism, which Skagos is well known for. This theory goes further, stating Osha picked Skagos as a destination because she knew Rickon was a warg, and the Skagosi could help them, since they themselves have experience with skin changers and being wargs. Osha could know the danger of losing oneself in an animal, and see Rickon is slowly becoming more and more savage and perhaps losing himself within Shaggy Dog. If the island has wargs or knowledge of wargs, they could help Rickon not lose himself. How does she know this? People that believe this theory also claim Osha has family on Skagos, or that since she's a wildling, and wildlings seem to have more knowledge of magic and special animals, she knows the signs of a warg and where to get help. If this theory has any truth to it, an island full of people with warg or skin changing ability would be an interesting read next book. Down ticks to this theory, there's really no evidence that the Skagosi are wargs or have any skin changing ability. It's mere speculation that Osha brought Rickon to the island because of it. And how would Osha know Rickon had this ability? He's a very young child. Yes, wildlings have more experience with these things, but how easy would it be for Osha to see how much danger Rickon is in, and if he is really losing himself to his dire wolf? In reality, Osha probably brought Rickon to Skagos because it was close, away from the mainland's fighting, and she had some familiarity with the land. Number four. This states that it wasn't Osha that picked Skagos, but Maester Lewin, who instructed instructed her to take Rick into the island. Why would Maester Lewin pick Skagos? Maybe because no one would think to look for a Stark there, or maybe because he knew the Starks had family on the island. Up until the release of The World of Ice and Fire, some felt George was hiding the identity of Ned's mother. His response when asked about her was suspiciously short. Lady Stark. She died. People began baking Skagos conspiracy theories. Was Ned's mom a Skagosi? Did the Starks have close bonds to the island? If the island was full of wargs, is this why the young Stark generation is full of wargs? Then we figured out Ned's parents were simply Stark cousins which began other wheels turning. Okay, so what if the Skagosi didn't marry directly into the Stark family line, but another house of the north? A hundred-ish years ago, Skagos rebelled. Thousands of lives were lost, and even the Lord Stark perished. To bring peace, the Starks could have either A, taken a ward or hostage, or B, married some Skagosi into the north. So what if the Skagosi married into some of the north houses, such as the Flints, and then the Flints married into the Stark family? They would then have Skagosi blood, although diluted in Ned's children. Those that believe the first theory I talked about, Warg or Skin Changer Island, sometimes also subscribe to the second theory stating that Skagos is a Warg Island who had a daughter marry into the Flints, and then the Flints into the Starks, and that brought about the Stark Warg generation. Some down ticks, it's more probable after the rebellion a ward or hostage would be taken to Winterfell. We never hear about a hostage or ward though, but we also never hear about peace through intermarrying with the Skagosi. Why did the Warg ability skip a generation or two? and why would it be strongest in a generation with diluted Skagosi blood? We don't know how warg genetics works. George R. R. Martin has said this isn't a Stark ability. Is it a rare genetic trait that passes through some families? Is it random? Faramir is a powerful skin changer that has had multiple bastards, and none have the gift. We really have no idea how the warg or skin changing ability passes, or what conditions are necessary for its expression. Next, even if Maester Lewin knew the Starks had family in Skagos, would he really believe the Skagosi cared enough to protect Rickon? That seems to be an awfully big chance to take. And when Osha is asking where the boys should go, Lewin mentions a few places, but not Skagos. It is possible he could have thought about the island as an afterthought before Osha gave him the gift of mercy. However, I'd imagine the Mountain Clans would be a better choice to Maester Lewin than Skagos. Other down tick, George R. R. Martin said Osha will most likely have an expanded role, which means we might get more backstory 
Maybe this is leading to her Skagos relations reveal. Anyways, it would be a twist to find Maester Lewin sent Rick into the island because of family, and would be fun if this theory mixed in with a Warg Island one as well, which sort of ties into theory number three, which is going to make you roll your eyes. Number three. This is the craziest one, I promise. But there's something about this theory that just tickles me. Benjen isn't dead, but on Skagos. This Benjen Skagos theory goes like this. Benjen, just like Bran, is a green seer. While outranging, Benjen has a vision of his fellow brothers being attacked by the others, so he buries his cloak and a bunch of obsidian. But that's not all he sees. Benjen knows Rickon will be taken to Skagos and needs someone to defend him. Knowing this, Benjen heads to Skagos to wait for Rickon after his group is attacked and he barely makes it out alive. Why protect Rickon and not the other Starks? Maybe he had a vision only of Rickon. Or he saw that Jon would die, Arya was an Essos, Sansa a captive, and Bran doing tree things, and realized Rickon was the last hope for the Stark line. But I still find it hard to believe Benjen would abandon his black brothers. Does this theory really have any solid proof? Hell no. But really, does any other Benjen theory? Number two, the unicorns on the island are actually woolly rhinos. Evidence for this, the description of the unicorns on Skagos doesn't match the unicorns we've seen on House Sigils in Westeros. None of the sigils look like a goat with a horn, as John describes it. Weird enough, the A Song of Ice and Fire wiki, which don't ever take that for a legitimate source, the errors that thing has is incredible. But it describes unicorns in A Song of Ice and Fire as a large goat-like animal, even though the house sigils look like horses with horns. So take from that what you will. But to some, the Skagos unicorn being described differently than the house sigil unicorns makes it likely the unicorns on Skagos are actually something else and not the mythical unicorns we're imagining. Also, Leaf, one of the children of the forest, states that the unicorns are all but gone. It sounds like the unicorns on Skagos are still prevalent and bred, which makes some believe the unicorns on Skagos aren't the actual unicorns Leaf is talking about. The Skagos creature actually being a woolly rhino would fit in nicely with the Ice Age megafauna we have going on, such as direwolves, mammoths, giant elks, etc. And funny enough, when Marco Polo encountered rhinos, he actually thought they were unicorns. Down takes to this, our woolly rhinos have two horns, not one as described in the books. Although the description the goat's long horn had raked him could leave it open to having two, just one being a bit shorter. Also, the woolly rhinos on our planet didn't look like goats with a horn. At least, I don't think they did. But George has demonstrated he's not a zoologist and he can change animals however he pleases. There are also single horned goats, but they are typically artificially created that way. There is speculation that this may have happened in the past in our own world. There there's medieval art that depicts unicorns that look more like goats, not horses, with a horn. George Loves History may have read this and then decided the Skagosi bred special mounts with one horn. But really, who are we kidding? I know we all want Skagos to be filled with these guys. And my favorite theory number one. The Skagosi aren't actually savages, or their reputation is way overblown. People question if the island's reputation is purposely exaggerated to keep outsiders away. What better way to be left alone than create this frightening image of psycho cannibal savages? George likes to show us point of views from characters that see a culture or group as savage or barbaric. However, when we get to know this other culture or people, we often find those assumptions aren't true, or not completely. Some Sometimes it becomes apparent the savages are just as cruel as civilized Westeros. There are some that think that the island of Skagos has a rich culture that doesn't revolve around barbaric murder and cannibalism. However, there are others that think even though they do practice cannibalism, it isn't because of savagery but an alternative burial rite. If the wildlings burn their dead to keep them from coming back, could the stoneborn be eating them for a similar reason? If to not keep the dead from coming back, it's still reasonable the act of eating their own could be a burial or spiritual right. Tribes in our own world have practiced the same. And we know blood magic is very strong. Maybe the Skagosi perform blood magic to strengthen their magic. Another thought is what if they ate each other one tough winter and then the tales simply stuck? Or the practice somehow stayed, maybe through lean times, until it was just ingrained in their culture. Or someone from Westeros met one or two crazy Skagosi that got to the mainland and assumed they were all crazy human flesh eaters. Or what if they really are just crazy bastards that like chewing on human flesh? Some evidence given for them being non-savages, Bale the Bard, if the wildling story can be true, came to Winterfell under the identity of a Skagosi. He was welcomed into Winterfell, sat at Lord Stark's own table, and entertained the lords there. If the Skagosi are so terrifying and brutal, why would they welcome a bard from there to sing to them? Maybe because the Starks have a habit of welcoming singers north or south, but it still seems a bit off to welcome a savage to dine at your table. 
When Noya talks about seeing Skagosi at Eastwatch, he merely mentions it. He doesn't tell it as a story of barely surviving or add anything dangerous about them. He even listened to some of their conversations. If they are that savage, why wouldn't he interject something about it? Probably because the Skagosi aren't as brutal and savage as people would like them to seem. And they have for what passes as noble houses over there. This means they have some type of leadership, and adds weight to them not being as uncivilized as we're led to believe. There's a lot of possibilities, and the idea this isn't a plain and simple cannibal island really intrigues me. I hope there's more to the island of Skagos than a silly island full of cannibals. Those are my five favorite Skagos theories I like, but don't necessarily subscribe to. Next book will shed some light on the island, and hopefully George will release his next Dunkin' Egg book soon that should take place during the Skagosi Rebellion. What are your favorite Skagos theories? As I said in the beginning, I prefer this video to be about discussion of Skagos and not a you should believe in these theories, so do you think Skagos is as crazy of an island as we're led to believe? New Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire videos every Sunday and Wednesday, and sometimes other days if I have an extra video. October is going to be a weird month, and you'll hear about that schedule soon.